we're gonna go ahead and take some of this stuff apart because when I order my parts from Richard's Lawn and Garden, I want to make sure I get you know as many things as I need in one shipment. It saves me money and time. I mean, I know I need this bushing, so um, you go ahead and take this off. Now I can't, I can't take this arm out of here without removing the choke cable. So let's just take the the little clamp that holds the choke cable loosen that and get that cable out of the way so we can pull back this little clip these are very common they still use them today I believe on carburetors a lot you just pull it up off the arm and then you can pull your cable out or your your arm out I got a little there's a groove in the back of this thing that would uh, change you know it would it would change everything change the geometry I may uh, try to rebuild that now this little clips gonna come off now you can see how oblong and wore out that hole is that's bad so we're gonna go ahead and remove that okay I got that bell crank I think that's what this is called a bell crank I got it off uh, I, I didn't I wasn't able to just slide it straight off um, it was it was on there pretty good I just held the throttle shaft with my finger here in one position and just rotated it while I'm pulling and it took a few minutes but I got it I got it to come off so what we're gonna do I've turned the fuel uh, or have I no I have not okay we're gonna turn the fuel off on the bottom of the tank we'll get a little bit of fuel coming out of the hose no big deal Take this clamp off. There we go. Just get it up out of the way. I probably need to replace this hose. You know, rubber breaks down after 50 years. <laughs> A little bit of fuel spillage. No big deal. I need to take off the choke cable. We're going to remove the carburetor, by the way. Stick it on the bench. Uh, let me go ahead and remove, completely remove this junk of a hose here. I'll tell you what, when you think you need something for one of these old tractors and the price on something is reasonable, you might need to buy it. Don't wait. <clears throat> I'll tell you why. I've got Richard's uh, parts catalog in my book from, from 1998. So... Um, 17 years ago, I can't believe I've, st I've got that thing. Uh, 17 years ago, I printed that manual. It's all the stuff that they sold at that time. And, and 17 years ago, this hose was seven dollars. And I think I already told you it's it's a, it's almost sixty dollars now. So I think all that's left here, take these two bolts off right here on top. And the carburetor will drop down. Mm-hmm. Get him, Bella. Get him. Get him, Bella. Get him. You want to do circles? Do some circles. Do some circles. Get him. Do something. Gee whiz. Well, I had to break out my gunsmithing tools to get that screw out of there. None of my screwdrivers would work. I ended up uh, a 3 16 bit to get these uh, butterfly bolts, whatever you want to call them, out of there. That's all we had to do is get that out of there. Uh, Richards offers, I believe, offers a uh, carburetor rebuild surface for those that don't have the time or testicle fortitude to be able to get into something like this. Um, <laughs> the dirt dauber nest. I'm only kidding about the testicle fortitude, of course. I understand all about time. If I didn't have people working for me, I wouldn't have time for this stuff either. I'd be shipping it to Richards.
that gum dirt divers. Y'all have those things up north? Every hole they can find, they put a nest in. Okay, I believe I got everything I need to start cleaning this carburetor up. Went inside the house and got my wife's bowl and my son's toothbrush and some soapy water, hot soapy water. <laughs> I'm gonna let this machine work on this carburetor a little while while I go clean up and go to the store and maybe go order some parts. Anyway, let's see what we got. What's in the stew pot? What if you can cook jambalaya in that thing? I bet it would tenderize the heck out of some meat with all that vibration and stuff. That'll be another video. <laughs> all right. Looks like it broke some paint down. This is just Dawn dishwashing liquid. Booger hot. Let's start with this. That gun. All right, let's get this thing apart. First thing I want to do is remove the idle screw. Now let's see here. First thing we want to do is we want to count how many turns we go in and we'll record that. So <laughs> that wasn't even, that wasn't nothing. It bumped right there. So I think that's supposed to be a turn and a half out. I'll look at the manual when we go back together with it. They give you recommended settings to start with, but this would be your idle. It looks pretty good, it's pointy. Got your spring on it. Let me stop for a second. I <clears throat> Whenever I'm taking something apart, I put it on, I put it on paper in the order it came apart. I'll start left to right, make a second row, third row if I got to. And uh, that way when I go back together with it, I just know to start over here and work my way backwards, okay? Uh, let's see here. We want to remove the. Let's remove the bowl drain. I'll clean that out. Now this is going to be your your main jet. Uh, the I know from from reading the manual a few days ago that the starting point on the main jet is one and a half turns so right there one thing about this main jet is before you go to turning on the t-handle you need to make sure the packing nut is loose so once you get it to where you want it you can hold it in place tighten the packing nut and that'll keep it in place and keep it from leaking so now it's it's be harder to turn so if you got one a t-handle that's hard to turn just give that packing nut a little turn counterclockwise and you'll be able to adjust it that is a 5 16 inch wrench now we don't need to take that apart right now we're gonna go ahead and remove it <coughs> remove the whole jet from the bowl right there this is gonna have a washer on it it would probably come in a kit and that needle looks good nice and sharp you got the jet that the jet is still down in there. I'll tell you what, this uh, B square, it's it's you're gonna get it from a place like Midway. Uh, it's a it's a gunsmith toolkit. It's pretty basic, but these screwdriver bits are superior to the stuff you're gonna get at the store. <clears throat> Plus, there's a bunch of different sizes. Highly recommend that you get you a set. They're not all that expensive and they may keep you from damaging some stuff. So that feels really good in there. Mm -hmm. And it's coming out, which is a good thing too, right? 
really just a, an orifice that uh, allows fuel to pass through in a metered kind of way. There we go. Just a little air. Just a little air. All right. So on your jets, when you are inspecting a jet, you want to hold this thing up to the light and look in it. Hold it up to the light. You have a light behind you. You're looking in it, and you want to see a perfectly round hole. No fuzzy stuff. No nothing. Nothing in there at all. It just needs to be a perfectly round hole. <clears throat> Don't take a drill bit and uh, clean a jet out. They make some tools specifically for that. <clears throat> I don't have them. They're easy enough to clean usually. A little gasket in there for that. Give that a little blow. All right. And leave that on. And oh, by the way, when I got it cleaned up, I saw once everything was clean, the bushing is actually still inside the body. All right, so change our bit back to the big one and take the bowl off of the body of the carburetor. Holy cow, look at that. That ain't bad at all. Shoot, that's one of the better looking carburetors I've seen. And the float. And I believe there's going to be a spring and a, and a jet. Yep, right there. Man, that float looks great. Is that sp that's, yeah, it is a spring load. I don't know if it's gravity. It's, okay, it just falls out with gravity. There's a little... Little jet right there. This is how that little dude I just pulled out there. So the, the carburetor's like this. You got that jet that goes up in here. Your float is sitting down in the bowl. And it is its purpose in life is to keep the bowl full of fuel. Alright. So when this when you're consuming fuel the fuel level in the bowl goes down the float goes down and when the float goes down that jet that's sitting right there comes down with the hopefully unless it's stuck it comes down with the float and allows fuel to come back into the bowl so if you've got a fuel starvation issue you might just have a dirty uh, float needle i think they call it it's not really a jet it's just a needle all right, let's get that get, work that gasket off there carefully, even though we're going to replace it. You know, uh, I'd rather be careful with it. There we go. Okay, it goes on. There's a groove behind the venturi <clears throat> that it was hanging up on right there. So this is the part. This mating surface right here on the venturi is what goes right there in that in that. Uh, throat and if it gets corroded so that's a good fit it's a real good fit and if you get some gas old gas or whatever and gets corroded in there that's what makes this thing so hard to get off let's we'll see if i can get a a bit on that one metric tools on American American machinery way better okay <laughs> 11 30 seconds I don't want to violate the machine by putting some metric tools on it
Well, I'm glad I took it out. A little debris in there. I can get that cleaned off really easily. I'm going to pull that choke plate off. Choke plate is coming off. If I can get it turned just right. There's a, uh, you'll see it here in a second, it stopped right here. What keeps it from going a certain distance? I don't know what that distance would be. Spring loaded and for some reason. I'll clean that up. Might as well go all the way with it here. Alright, let I mean make some notations here where we are we got the choke arm at about nine o'clock the uh the choke cable uh bracket is sitting at about 12 o'clock the screws are going in at 12 30 and 6 30 position not time of day Alright, so sit here here's the the shaft for the choke. It looks like the same design as the throttle shaft. This is a little bit shorter. This is not the concentrated stuff, that's why I'm using so much. It's what they call simply clean. Whenever you see a label on something in the store and it is green. You can almost guarantee you're getting ready to get ripped off. So they're selling you soap and water instead of just soap. They're diluting the soap down and calling it simply clean and giving it a green background. And then you read the, the fine print, non-concentrated. So it's just watered down dishwashing liquid. That's it. That is it. Hey, contains no phosphate. Uh huh. There's a lot of Spanish on here, so I can't read some of this stuff. Mm hmm. Do not add bleach. Oh, there it is. Biodegradable something and others. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not like anti-earth or anything, but quit ripping us off. 